very good morning to all. I hope you have understood the text. Let me recapitulate the key ideas and important lines related to this chapter for better understanding. Let us begin. The last lesson by Alphonse Daudet, who was a French novelist and a short story writer. It deals more specifically with two main characters who are Am Hamel, who is a teacher, and Franz, who is a student. The teacher is loyal, hardworking, a true patriot, whereas Franz, a sensitive, nature lover, sincere, and emphatic child. As I refer to the book, you can see in the beginning itself, I started for school very late. And here we come to know that the child has not read the chapter. He has not learned the rules on participle. That is why he is scared. And it's but natural that he thought of running away and spending the day out of doors. It was so warm, so bright. The birds were chirping at the edge of the woods. And in the open fields back of the sawmill, the Prussian soldiers were drilling. So this shows that how the child prefers to go in the lap of nature instead of attending the school. So, in the next paragraph, as we move, we come to know about two themes before we are dealing with the chapter. Make sure that here the themes are first, the patriotism, second, the freedom of language and love for one's mother tongue. The story revolves around how war plays a pivotal role in the human lives. The story, as you have read, I am sure you must have felt that it highlights the unfair practice of linguistic chauvinism, which means unreasonable pride in one's own language or disregarding other languages and taking them inferior. So, as we were moving on to the third paragraph, which takes us to the bulletin board, here if you can see, for the last two years, all our bad news had come from there. The lost battles, the draft, the orders of the commanding officer. So, when we refer the bulletin board, we keep in the mind that the order has come from Berlin that only German will be taught. Is it, I hope it's clear. Let's move on to the next page. As we move, you can see the paragraph. Usually when the school began, there was a great bustle. As we continue, you could see and refer this line. That day, everything had to be as quiet as Sunday morning. So, it brings out some unusualness in the atmosphere. The school has begun and it's expected that when the school is begun, there must be some commotion, some noise, the rustling, the way the benches and the tables are, are shifted from one particular place to the another. But here, everything was quiet today. He mistook it to be Sunday morning. No commotion. And he was rather surprised, as you read later, that at the back benches, which usually seemed to be empty, they were occupied by village people. Let's move on to the next page, page 4. The whole school seemed 
so strange and so low. But the thing that surprised me most was to see on the back benches that were always empty the village people sitting quietly like ourselves. So as everyone is sitting there, the students are there, the elderly people are sitting there, he was wondering what has happened? Why this unusual scene in a classroom? And at that particular point of time, M. Hamel, in the gentle tones, says, My children, this is the last lesson I shall give you. And you see the immediate response. What a thunderclap! These words were to me. I hope you can enjoy that initially when he heard that the teacher is going to deliver the lecture for the last time, he's overjoyed with emotion that no more scolding, no more punishments, no more that iron ruler. And so M. Hamel's announcement was a thunderclap for him. But suddenly in the next two lines, he comes to know that grim truth behind it, which was, he was full of guilt. His heart was guilt-ridden because he had neglected his lesson as well as school. And the thought of losing the teacher as well was extremely painful. His books, his bag, everything was a nuisance a while ago, so heavy to carry. See the change in his tone that now everything he felt were his prized possessions. Moving next, the old people, they were sitting there in the classroom. It was their way to thank their teacher for his 40 years of faithful service and of showing their respect for the country that was theirs no more. When we move next, again this is an important part which usually the question is asked in the board exams. Bah! This gives an expression of annoyance. I have plenty of time. I learn it tomorrow. A common basic attitude of all human beings. We often postpone learning till tomorrow. It's not with one nation of you people. It is a tendency of the common people. And that is why the teacher points out the common problem. And he speaks out. That's the great problem with Elsass. She puts off learning till tomorrow. And so he points out those fellows. Those fellows refers to the Prussian soldiers, the invaders. They might come the next day and they, um, they might ask, How is it? You pretend to be Frenchmen and yet you can neither speak nor write your own language. And then he refers to one more very important part that is, we have all a great deal to reproach ourselves with. This is very important from both point of view. Just see the notes. M. Hamill here voices his repentance and holds everyone responsible, not only the child. He blames the elders that they he used to send the children to work on the farms and the mills because they always expected and loved the extra income the children did for the family. Even M. Hamel had sent the children to water his flowers. And at times, whenever he wanted to go for fishing, he gave them holiday. Next, he comes to this last paragraph of page 5 when he talks about his mother tongue, French language, saying, 
it was the most beautiful language in the world the clearest the most logical that we must guard it amongst us and never forget it because when a people are enslaved please mark this paragraph as important when a people are enslaved as long as they hold fast to their language it is as if they had the key to their prison just refer the notes it refers and glorifies the beauty of their mother tongue that how important it is to have the national identity the love the patriotism for our mother tongue refer the notes the political enslavement as in the present story it was done by the germans by the prussians certainly is a curse the rulers often dictate their own terms and they force the natives restrain them confine them by law and other reasons so that they cannot speak their mother tongue at such point of time the mother tongue keeps alive their identity it stands as a symbol of national pride which binds the people together it helps to preserve the rich cultural heritage and it is the only common source of hope and faith that one day the spirit of freedom will come back and they will rebel against these invaders and win their country back that is why the term hence key to prison which will open up all locked doors and ultimately france will become a free country i hope it's clear let's move on to the further assignment in this part as the grammar they were reading it out for the first time the child feels that everything was going up they were able to understand and he the poor teacher was trying to put all in our heads at one stroke and as the child was reading the other young children also they were also gifted the beautiful notebooks once you can see the rapt attention everyone has that once some beetles flew in but nobody paid any attention to them this shows how serious and how sincere they were because it was the last lesson given by their teacher and this is again an important part on the roof the pigeons cooed very low and i thought to myself will they make them sing in german even the pigeons so this is the child's query the child is inquisitive and that is why he questions looking at the pigeon he thinks about the natural instincts that have been given by the god and that is why he thinks because language is a tool for communication in their case french was their mother tongue it was as natural to them as cooing is to the pigeons robbing them of it was certainly forcing the german language on them and this was very difficult but certainly next to impossible and the child whenever he got time he was trying to have a look of am hamel and he was feeling sorry for misunderstanding his teacher who was so sincere so emotional and a true patriot as he was looking at him gazing here and there at every time he felt pity for the teacher that he had been for 40 years there please note 
the teacher was here and that place that place for about 40 years and a good proof of this could be seen through the garden the trees that they have come to the window and today his sister and he along with other things are packing up moving away for another country or leaving this country forever now come to the last part here when the church clock struck 12 he could see the trumpets of the prussian soldiers returning from the drill at the time again am hamel got the signal and that is why you can see the change am hamel stood up very pale in his chair i never saw him look so tall here the tall is not used for one purpose here the tall refers to the greatness of a teacher that he was not only tall in terms of height but here it terms in the it comes in the terms of his qualities his nature that how many qualities he had apart from becoming emotional apart from becoming patriot he was sensitive he was a selfless person who cared nothing only was a person who was dedicated wholeheartedly to his job and you see in the last vive la france which means long live france and finally am hamel signs of on a high patriotic note that they must preserve their national identity i hope by now the chapter must be clear to you and you must have understood the chapter in a little better manner